Jamat Karsandu here, um, alongside Luis Goodnight Guadano, pre-fight before he takes on Phil Harris this Saturday night at the O2 Arena. Uh, so first of all, uh, Lu- is it Luis or is it Louis? What do you prefer to go by? Uh, Louis is good. Louis is like good? Louis. All right, Louis. Well, first of all, welcome to London. Is this your first time here? Yeah, it actually is. I, uh, I went to Spain twice for, for like study abroad in college, but yeah, first time in the UK. When did you get in? Uh, Tuesday. All right. Tuesday morning. Are you spending any time here after the fight? Uh, no, I'm heading home on Sunday. You know, I gotta go see my daughter. Wow, so literally it is all business and then you fly back to, to New Jersey. Yeah, that's what I'm here to do, here yeah. for business. I'll come on a vacation with my family maybe one time. Brilliant, alright. Well, first of all, kind of, let's go back to, you know, your last performance. It didn't quite go your way uh, and it's been quite a while since we've seen you perform in the Octagon. Can you just let us know how you first handled the loss and what you have uh, changed uh, during your camp before this fight? Um, yeah, after a loss, I'm miserable for about a week or two. You know, you kind of go into, into a depressive state, but you know, then you got to put yourself out of it, you know, and, and get back on the horse. So, you know, this camp, I've just been working on everything, getting everything better, you know, wrestling, boxing, jujitsu, conditioning, you know, that way, wherever the fight goes, you know, I'm going to be a little bit better than he is. Okay. Uh, and I'm, I'm assuming uh, from my research, this is the first fight overseas for you. Is that correct? Yeah, this is my first international fight. Wow. Okay. Can you just talk to us about some of the challenges um, that fighting overseas poses to a fighter compared to maybe fighting in the States? Uh, you know, jet lag is, is one of them, although the time difference isn't that too bad for me. Um, you know, my main thing was, you know, making sure I can make weight, you know, so finding food that I can eat or, you know, that my body's used to when I'm cutting weight and things like that, which, you know, ha- hasn't been too bad, so. Okay, so you haven't tried a full English breakfast yet? No, not yet. Uh, <laughs> Sunday morning, probably. <laughs> right. Okay, well, when did the UFC approach you about Phil Harris and what do you think about your opponent? Uh, I think it's a good matchup. It, it's an exciting matchup. You know, uh, Phil likes to bring it. He's a tough guy. And, uh, you know, they offered it to me about two, two months ago, maybe two and a half months ago. And, you know, I jumped at the chance to fight here in the UK. And, you know, I'm, I'm in enemy territory a little bit, but, I, you know, I still think it's, a, it's going to be a fun night. I was going to speak to you about that. Um, do you, would you maybe embrace the kind of the villain role? Because obviously you're fighting a guy from the UK. He's going to have the home crowd support there. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think he'll have the home crowd support, but, uh, you know, on, on my season of tough, I was on, you know, Bisping's team, so, you know, I have a couple fans here in the UK, and they've been supporting me throughout my career, so maybe there won't be too, as, too, mu- too many boos, you know, as people are thinking. Okay, well, when, when I spoke to Phil yesterday, he, he jumped the chance to, to fight you, um, because obviously you've defeated John Lineker, um, who gave him his last loss, so it's funny how things come around like that. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't buy too much into the MMA math, you know, I beat Lineker, Lineker beat him, so I should beat him, so I'm not, you know, going into this fight overly confident or cocky, but uh, I, I do think it's a favorable matchup, you know, I feel uh, I feel confident going in there, but, uh, you know, come Saturday night, I just think it's going to be a good fight. Okay. I mean, with both of you having a one and two record so far in the UFC, does that put any extra added pressure for, for, for you personally that, you know, how some other fighters have maybe been cut after a certain number of losses, does that put any extra pressure to make sure you that whatever happens, you have to get this win? Uh, I'm, I'm trying not to think about it too much, you know, and, and get, get that pressure on your mind or, or thinking you can be cut after a loss. You, you can win four fights and then lose one crappy performance and they'll cut you. So, you know, I definitely think I bring it every time I, I, I come and fight in the UFC. Um, if I lose, they might cut me. I don't know. But, you know, I'm not going to give them the chance to. Fair enough. Well, it was quite interesting. I was looking at um, Phil Harris's Twitter feed last week. And he, I don't know if you saw this, he tweeted a, a picture which said that he has the highest number of submission victories in the current crop of UFC lightweights. Do you think that might have been a message directly to you that he might be going for a submission tomorrow or on Saturday night? He could try. He ain't going to get it. <laughs> But uh, no, I didn't see that tweet. Like I said, he could try. He's not going to get it. Fair enough. Um, there's no beef between you two. I saw you um, yesterday in the in the hotel uh, lobby. Things are very cordial between you two. There's lots of respect there between the two of you as well. Does that make it easier, or would you prefer if there was some history there or some beef to get motivated to fight somebody? Uh, I, I don't get angry before a fight or, or need that extra motivation. You know, in the back, I'm, I'm joking around and laughing. You know, that's my game face. You know, it works for me. Some guys like to get angry and mean, but you know we here to do a job and it, I don't dislike Phil I'm sure he doesn't dislike me but you know we signed the contract we're here to fight each other we'll shake hands before and after the fight and you know it's it's all business okay you're still one of the first few fighters in 2014 that will be performing on fight pass uh, for everyone around the world what have you made so far uh, about fight pass what do you think about it and does that affect anything for you behind the scenes at all uh, you know at first when you hear you're fighting on fight pass it's 
it's a little weird because you're like, oh, I'm not going to be on TV in the States, but, you know, they can they can go online and still watch it. So as long as my family and friends and my students can watch the fight, you know, I'm fine with it. It doesn't matter if they put me on pay-per-view, Fox, or Fight Pass. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to fight the same. Fair enough. Well, um, outside of the rest of the world, there's been a major announcement here in the UK last week that uh, for the first time ever, uh, the main card and highlights of the prelims will be airing in a two-hour special live feed on a station in the UK called Channel 5. Uh, and maybe you're not aware of this, but Channel 5 is one of only five free-to-air networks here in the UK. It's almost the equivalent of being on something like Fox. Um, um, there's been other uh, combat sports like boxing that have had up to two million viewers. So outside of the, the UFC card being broadcast live, on BT Sport. Uh, the main card and highlights will also be on Channel 5. So you may not get the viewership that you maybe perhaps wanted globally on Fight Pass. There's a good chance, as long as you maybe do get a, a finish or a, or a performance that warrants a highlight uh, on the Channel 5 broadcast, you'll be amongst the first few UFC fighters that will be broadcast to the most amount of viewers here in the UK ever. So it's, it's quite a history-making card here for the UFC in the UK. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm definitely going to you know give them a, a performance that's worthy to, to be on that two hour special and, and you know give them some highlights so it's pretty cool it's pretty cool uh, and for anyone that obviously hasn't seen you you know perform before uh, f you know fight fans in the UK what can they expect from you uh, they can expect a lot of action they can expect uh, you know me to go out there and bite down my mouthpiece and and throw some big punches and and just get ready for a good performance now obviously fight fans uh, in the UK we've always been familiar um, with uh, somebody else that's uh, like to dye their hair a, a certain color uh, by the name of Dan the outlaw Hardy um, and obviously um, you know <laughs> with, your, with your affiliation there with that t-shirt um, do you think that some maybe other fighters um, should be doing a few more gimmicky things to maybe stand out from their particular divisions um i didn't do it as a gimmick at first you know i did it as an amateur i just you know green's my favorite color and you know i have a profession where i can go to work every day with green hair you know i'm not a doctor or a lawyer so that's what i did it for but uh you know, i guess it helps me to stand out and stuff that wasn't my intention i just like to do it and you know i have a job where i can do it so uh you know i think it's pretty cool i love